an extra added video <laughs> because we, the other one was getting too long on the way the moods work in Greek. And not only is it an extra added video, but you're going to have to put up with my horrible handwriting. So we've got a chart here that, that you see on the blackboard. And um, what, what I'm trying to show in the chart is that here's the way that the moods work in Greek. Um, and it's a system, okay? When you just look at an element in a system, you don't know what the heck it's doing. And um, and so if you see something about the whole, you can maybe get a better grasp on it. So on the on the two ends, okay, the first column says ind, that's my writing for indicative, okay, which I think is the absence of a mood. And on the other end of the chart, on the far right, it says, and my handwriting is terrible, I realize, unreal, okay. Um, there's a way you can talk in, in English as well as in Greek about things that you know are true, okay? So you can, you can say this would be Thursday if yesterday was Wednesday, right? But it isn't, right? So you're making an admittedly false statement and the, that you can do in, in, in any language, and, and Greek has its way of doing that. It actually takes the indicative and puts a little flag in front of it and says, it looks like the indicative, but it's really false, okay? So so these two things, the indicative and the unreal, when we get to learning about the unreal, which we're not going to yet, are are um, contrastive and very clear con categories, what's true and what's admittedly false, what you're asserting to be true, like today is Thursday, and what you know is false. This would be Thursday, but it isn't. Okay. Um, in between them, in Greek, there are two ways of attenuating the truth of a statement without re rejecting it entirely. And they're the subjunctive and the optative. And the subjunctive and the optative contrast with one another just the way the indicative and the unreal do, okay? And that is, they're, one of them's closer to, to what's true and the other's closer to what's false, okay? So it was Belisi who came up with the subjunctive is sort of true and the optative is sort of false, okay? It's about a continuum of of falseness of uh, between truth and falsehood, and and uh, and there are two stages on the way in between, right? Um, so I, I'll also put up those funny uh, upside down brackets between the subjunctive and the optative, which contrast with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, they're different from each other, and the indicative and the unreal, which contrast with one another, and the two pairs, which contrast with one another. That is the true and the false, which are clear and simple, and the relatively the sort of true and the sort of false, which are, are a different kind of thing than the indicative and the unreal. Okay, now we'll see more about how this works when we get to talking about um, actual uses of the indicative. So this is kind of an abstraction and a good thing to kind of understand. So then we'll see why things work the way that they do. Okay. Yep.